I'm Joe Tilly. We're talking boxing on this week's show with three great Canadian champs, Troy Ross, Mark Simmons, Ray Oluwabali, Joe Tilly Sports, coming up. Welcome to the program. I am very excited about this week's show, folks. We've got a fantastic panel for you. Three great champions on the program, and let me introduce them to you. First of all, light heavyweight and cruiserweight, born in Georgetown, Guyana, moved to Canada at seven years of age, a two-time Olympian. His professional record, 25-3, and three, was 16 knockouts. He was the Contender Series champion, a Canadian champion, Commonwealth champion, Troy, the boss. Ross, he was a Toronto heavyweight who fought over 241 times as an amateur, over 200 victories, a five-time Canadian champion, a 2000 Olympian from Sydney, a Pan Am Games silver medalist, a Commonwealth Games gold medalist. He is now a world-renowned referee, Mark Simmons. And he was born in Lagos, Nigeria, moved to Toronto at age four, Former Canadian heavyweight champion, established actor, played Axe Undead in Resident Evil Afterlife and in Resident Evil Retribution, man known as Mount Kilimanjaro. Ladies and gentlemen, Bola, Raymond, Oluwabali. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Great to have you all here. <laughs> Thank you. It's Great a pleasure to be here. Be here. Good to be here. You guys look good, I'm telling you. Yeah, y'all you look y'all look like you can still fight. Well, Ray, as a matter of fact, you're still listed as as active. Uh are you still I'm active? Still are you fighting. still uh, taking fights? All right. I, I I'm not a quitter think... like these two. Um I I'm actually still beating up children. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're in there you're in the ring beating up those sparring partners. Oh exactly. Mark, I lost your audio there. Wait. Troy, Troy has never yeah. announced his retirement, so technically he's still active too. Oh really? I okay. Got a point All right. Though. Yeah. yeah I think, well, Ray, uh, one day I'll probably come out. <laughs> they, had, they had me listen well, the I, other day to fight um uh uh Badu Jack. That's <laughs> right. What? They had me listen the other day coming out of retirement to fight Badu Jack. So I might be coming out sooner uh. than you think. <laughs> well, man. I mean, listen. Look, look. With all the senior stuff going on these days, why not? Right. I mean, you can pick up a yeah, paycheck. Exactly. Look at, uh, you know, Roy Jones Jr. did, right? right? So, Ray, That's we're right. going to start with you a little bit about your career before we get into some other good stuff. Uh, you won the Canadian title from uh, David Kadu. That was a big upset. Kadu was 17-2 at the time or 17-1. He'd already beaten you once. Yeah. And then you went into his hometown, a 12 Riviere, and you beat David Kadu to win the title. Tell us about that moment for you and what was that like winning the Canadian title and, and – uh, you know, what it meant to to pull off that stunner that was absolutely well i i could i couldn't genuinely explain exactly how just over the moon i was um the david and i met once prior to that where he he, he squeaked out a spectacular win um when he was down on all the cards and we're talking going into the fifth round, he had already been busted up and whatnot. And then he caught me and I wanted that fight back so bad. Um, I chased him everywhere for it. And there was no way we met, like we saw each other on the same card when he won the Canadian title from Dave, from uh, Patrice LaRue. And I was in just in camp with Patrice, getting him ready for this fight. Um, it was a spectacular David Cadu, arguably the best looking heavyweight I've ever seen on Canadian soil. And that's what me included that fought that night. <laughs> the only thing is when I stepped in the ring in Trois Rivières against David, I had already beaten him before we stepped in the ring. I looked across the ring. He was already a defeated man. And it was just a question of just going through the paces. I wanted him. I trained like a demon for it, and I got him. 
Um, it was a sensational scenario. It was a sensational feeling and uh, genuinely something I will never forget. Now, Ray, one of the your your ring entrance was always interesting for me. I, I loved that. I remember seeing your Rama <laughs> walking over the top rope into the ring. <laughs> bang, it's, bang! It's what it was we, like it's what we do. How, that, that was it. You're right, man. It must be intimidating for an opponent, right? Here, but you, you know, you're you're kind of a tall drink of water here, man. Six foot seven, and uh, not everybody can just step over the top ring uh, rope into the ring. It's uh, it's what we do to ensure that I put the fear of God in these little crickets um, <laughs> and teach them about there, There's some action so. from, from Ray. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it looks, oh, dear looks God. like you're doing is, pretty good here. Play in the middleweight there? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, Ray's just that big. Is that Dave Dunbar in there? Yeah. That's oh, why they call that's Rocky. Yeah. Zolacek. Rocky. Oh, yeah, that's Rocky. Zolacek. Right, right. Wow. So that's going back a ways. Okay. Uh -huh. Actually, there was another fight. Um, I'm also in Canadian history um, as fighting the tallest combined height in that I fought Julius Long, who, well, totes that he's 7'1". I think he's more like 6'10". Uh, wow. But the tallest combined oh, height with us in the <laughs> ring. Right. And then right. the ref was again... Rocky Zolacek. Wow, oh, Rocky's wow. like, yeah, yeah, five four, mm. and you, you exactly. guys are combined 12, 12 feet seventeen inches. If I if my math is correct, <laughs> pretty impressive. Well, let's let's, let's move on to our to uh to our, our our buddy who the the small guy in the group tonight, uh, uh Troy Ross, the boss, <laughs> uh, cruiser who fought at light heavyweight and cruiserweight, also fought like uh, an established uh, amateur fighter, uh, two time Olympian, Troy. Uh, but your claim to fame was uh, really, I think, what most people would recognize you for is that big win in the Contender Series. And, and tell us about that and, and uh, tell us how you got involved in that, how you got into that experience, and, and just tell us what that experience was. Because, I mean, millions of people saw you all over the world. Yeah. You know what? Um, when, when I had an opportunity to do the uh, Contender, I remember I um, auditioned for it years ago um right after i uh finished the movie cinderella man and i went down to uh, vegas and um what happened was that i was there i was shadow boxing and they needed somebody else to spot to, to box with me at the time so nobody would nobody would step actually volunteer to step in the ring with me so i had nobody <laughs> I guess the guy saw me shadow box and said, "No, forget. It. I'm not gonna mess with this guy." And uh, so what I what I ended up doing was um, auditioning for the uh, fight, uh, just shadow boxing inside the ring by myself. And uh, that time they were um, they only chose uh, this the, they only chose the um, super middleweights. Uh, right. That's so you fight, had to lose uh, weight. You know. Like, I, no, I, I I would have to take off a limb, Joe, if I was to get down to that weight. But um, <laughs> <cruise away. laughs> but uh, the cruiserweight uh, division came up uh, the next couple few years, and um, I uh, again I went down to um I went down to Vegas to do the audition. Actually, it was in California, so I went down there and I did the audition. And um, after after a while, we stayed down there for a, a week. Uh, going through the process, and um, we were able to, I was able to be part of it. So, uh, so okay, um, if you had to lose a limb, a limb, which one was it going to be? It was going to be an arm or a leg. It's tough for a boxer <laughs> to lose an arm, so. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll hobble, I'll hobble around on one leg. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. So, uh, you, you, you got in that series, you in the, got in the contender series, and you won it all. And what was that like for you? Oh, uh, the... It, there's no other feeling. It was just an amazing feeling to actually come out uh, victorious because um, I've watched the show, um, all the other, because um, we did se um, season four and I've watched the other three se series of it. And um, it was just one of those amazing feelings. And we had like um, Sugar Ray Leonard um, come down to the final series. He wasn't there in uh, in Kuala Lumpur and uh, he had a chance to, you know, to, to talk talk to me um, and say a few words and all that stuff. And uh, it, was just, it was just one of those feelings that um, you can never forget because of um, just the magnitude of the fight and uh, being able to 
come back from Singapore, being one of the top fours. It was um, A.K. Ekamenor, um, Hino, uh, and then there was uh, Rico, Rico Hoy, and he was fighting against um, A.K. Uh, so to be the, um, the, 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 the top guy, to come back from uh, fighting with all those guys, uh, 16 guys, 16 guys all 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 on all um eight guys on on one side eight guys on the other side and every week another um two guys will fight and one guy goes home and i was happy that i was not one of those guys that was going home and said i was going on to the finals and then to come to win the but, whole thing it was unbelievable well i troy you got you know i mean you got the pedigree you come from a boxing family uh you 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 had that extensive amateur background you did have the uh the uh the one disappointment before you turned pro in, the, in your second Olympic Games, you were you were considered one of the medal medal favorites, and and you didn't make it uh, to the to the medals. And how disappointing for you was that? You know what? Um, after four years of getting ready to um, go back to the Olympics, um, deciding not to turn pro and uh, going back to the Olympics, like I said, uh, it was it was a big disappointment to me. Um, but I've always said, no matter what what happens in the Olympics, because uh, you never know what's going to happen with boxing at the end of the day, right? So um, I said to, I said I would turn pro regardless, and yeah, that was a that was a really big upset. Um, but you know what? I, I I shook myself off. I said I was going to turn pro and uh, try my hand with that and see how exactly how I can do. You but did yes, have a couple um, of title shots. Yeah. To this day, I still remember um, that loss, and uh, it's always been, you know, obviously it's been part of me. And I, it's, it's, it, but it, it, at at the same time, I can say that it helped elevate me to the level that I got to as a professional fighter. Right. It, it didn't hurt having you uh, all that all experience, right? That that didn't hurt you. You did have a couple of two no. world title shots as a pro, but just came up just short in those. Talk a little bit about that. Are, are you disappointed? Uh, disappointed with what happened there? Any regrets? And uh, the only the one I would I would say um, yes uh, two title fights and uh, two two sh two two times I came up short and uh, the reason why I came up short because um, they didn't see it my way and um, uh, the first one which I I I I, I don't like the guy um, Steve Cunningham um, I, it was a it was a blatant <laughs> it was a blatant thumb in the eye in the eye and um, remember that remember they that they called it. Uh, when when we were supposed to have a rematch we did not have the rematch um because uh when you get it's it's a technicality that i lost on uh, because of because of the thumb of, thumb in the eye and uh we weren't able to uh, do a rematch and i think if we had done a rematch the same result would have happened where i would end up dropping him or stopping him um in the fight and then, you, yeah um, you were on your way to winning fight, that fight for sure yeah. Yes, because uh, ten seconds after, um, I got a thumb in the eye that ended up stopping the whole thing. So, mm -hmm. um, but he swears up and down that he was he had the best of me and he was uh, popping me with his jab, which I don't even remember in the fight. I don't even see it when I when I watched over the, the videotape. <clears throat> but um, he could swear up and down that he um, he was actually winning that fight. And uh, to to take the belt like that, um, I don't believe that he even deserved it. To call himself a two-time world champion, so that's my part on on uh, Steve Cunningham. Well, I remember the fight at the time, and I, and I did I, back in the day. I would have had highlights of that fight on the air, and and uh, I couldn't believe it. You got totally robbed in that fight. You were clearly, in my mind, you were clearly the winner uh, up up to, up to that point. Mm -hmm. And they should have gone to the scorecards. I mean, I don't understand why they didn't, because I believe if they had gone to the scorecards, you would have won it. Is that not the case? Yeah. Uh, it's the reason why because we're we uh, it should have went to the scorecards because um, but we were just about to go into the the fifth round and that is the reason why they did not go to the the scorecards because after after the, the it has to go five round, rounds or more yeah yes yes so it, that's why they did not go to the the scorecards it's unfortunate because I should be walking around walking around with the uh, world title title with world title belt but. The IBF belt, but um, instead Steve Cunningham got it, and he gets worked well, now that you, he, he's, he was a, he was the legit champion. Right. Yeah. Well, he he can say that. We know here in Canada who the real champ is. No doubt about that. Oh, well, thank Troy, Mark, uh, Mark. Let's talk about your career. I remember, like, uh, I remember you as like I think you were eight years old 
when the first time I saw you is I think you were the mascot at the uh, Canadian Boxing Hall of Fame uh, induction dinner. And uh, you got into the ring and, and did your thing, or maybe it was in the ring, maybe it was just in the in the, in the, in the, in the uh, middle area where you get and you did a, a, a shadow boxing demonstration, a little bit of skipping, if I'm not mistaken. But you, I was so impressed by this little guy. You've been around the game a long time, my friend. Yeah, yeah, it's funny you remember that. That, that the year actually was 1984 because I still have the certificate. So I was actually 10 years old at the time, and I was uh, right. Uh, yeah, the Canadian mascot and basically that was uh, uh at the hall of fame dinner it was like this is a future potential uh let's say olympian and, and that was always my dream and uh you know since the 84 olympics i watched every olympics since and then troy in 96 i mean i nearly missed that one um but then the next four years i mean i traveled the world with with troy he was my roommate and uh you know we went to the olympics together in 2000 which was which was actually that that's uh charles corte's uh uh brother sorry sorry ike corte's brother that was fighting in the uh, oh, commonwealth okay. games this um but yeah it, it was uh uh i started young i think i started at five or six years old so i i boxed at 26 at the olympics and uh had one fight after that and that, that's about it that was my career Nice right hand there. Hey, now, Mark, uh, you know, tell us about this. Uh, the, the, the You had a Pan Am Games silver medal and you had this Commonwealth Games gold medal. Tell us about what it was like to, to win that gold medal for Canada, to be, uh, you know, to have that medal wrapped around your neck. Tell us about that whole experience. Yeah, that was, uh, I mean, again, I mean, I, I grew up watching all the, all the champions uh, on the national team. You know, when you, you look back in 94, it was it was Mike Strange and, and uh, you know, he won a gold medal at the Commonwealth Games. And I said to myself, because I missed those Commonwealth Games by this much, and I said to myself, and the guy I lost to won a silver medal, and I said, I'm going to the next Commonwealth Games and I'm going to win a gold medal. And I had that in my head, and, and that's exactly what I did. And... Uh, the feeling was phenomenal and, and uh, you know, Pan Am Games, again, to represent Canada at, at the Pan Am Games and win a silver medal. I mean, that was that was a huge accomplishment for, for myself. And uh, yeah, I remember this fight against uh, the fighter from Jamaica, who was, who was a big, strong fighter. And I, I was able to outpoint him and outbox him on the computer system and uh, uh, set me up to go to the Olympics next year. But uh, yeah, great, great memories. And, and, and you know, I, I was also there when, when Troy won the contender uh, championship so just to see him and, and one of my teammates uh show success like that in the ring it was it was a great great feeling you guys had a lot of good times together traveling and and uh, and winning it was fantastic what a great what a great uh, boxing team canada had back in those days absolutely yeah and and the reality was back in the 90s uh you know you look at the amateur system uh ontario really dominated in the 90s we had out of the 12 weight divisions we had eight or nine champions out of ontario and, and that's kind of shifted now to quebec um where they, they moved the national program to quebec uh, which is a little bit of a controversial issue in itself but um we had a very very strong team back then um and uh yeah traveled 20 25 countries around the world it was unbelievable so you made the decision not to turn pro uh any regrets over, about that now uh I, I don't have one regret. I mean, I fought some top, top fighters. I mean, I fought, you know, a couple Olympic gold medalists. Felix Savan, I fought him twice. He was a 92, 96, and 2000 Olympic gold medalist. Uh, Orlando Solis, who I fought in the finals of the, uh, the Pan Am Games from Cuba. Uh, he was a 2004 Olympic gold medalist. My, my philosophy on the pro game was, you know, if, if you're not going to be the best, and I felt I wanted to be the best, um, uh not to pursue pursue the career because i'd already been boxing for about 20 years at, at that time and and i would say i was a little burnt out uh and and uh, also there's big guys i mean you look at big ray i i still remember going back to uh the 95 1995 as i was in england and i was sitting beside uh, vladimir klitschko and you just see like the size of these guys are so big and and for me to move into the heavyweight division it, it just didn't make sense so uh very good decision for me not to turn pro. I, I was I was very fast. I had, you know, very good hand speed, but I, I didn't hit hard. <laughs> That's the reality. Well, you know what? Hard 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 enough. You had a few a few knockouts along the way. That's for sure. Now, listen. Uh, 
now you're a referee and, and uh, a pro referee and a referee who's uh, who's uh, you know got a really good reputation. A re, uh, uh, you know you're you're making quite a name for yourself out there, even though right now there's not a lot of fights to referee. Uh, but uh, tell us about that transition. And I mean, you know, as a as a great fighter yourself, do you ever get the uh, the inclination to 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 want to give a guy a shot if he doesn't listen to your commands and he gives you the kind of disrespect a little bit. <laughs> well, say like, <laughs> so you're in the no, race no, fighting no. somebody and say, Ray, I told you, I'm not going to tell you, I'm not only going to tell you once. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I mean, the transition to refereeing, I mean, the reality is um, I went into it thinking it was easy, you know, anyone can do it, but it's, it's a big learning process. And, and, you know, I, I think I, I became a professional referee in 2011 um, but you know, early on, I made some mistakes. I'm here to to admit, you know, that there is there's certain things that that had impacts in fights, and and uh, I took it upon myself to start traveling the world to these refereeing con uh, conferences, the WBC, the WBO, um, NA NABF conferences, and, and going to these referee seminars. And the, there's so much that goes into it that that most fight fans, most boxers, most promoters, managers, they just don't understand the, the intricacies of, of, of uh, you know, the mechanics of refereeing. And, uh, you know, I, I feel I, I've got a lot better over the years, uh, but, you know, it's always a learning process. And, and uh, I speak to some of the top referees in the world on, on a regular basis, you know, Jack Reese, um, from California, he did the Tyson Fury Wilder, the first Wilder fight. He's done numerous world title fights. Steve Willis out of New York, I talk to him all the time. And this this guy is one of the most intelligent um, individuals when it comes to refereeing. And, and you see him doing the championship fights out of New York. And and uh, I learned from the best. And that, that's the only way you get better is, is, is learning from the best. And, and for me, one day I hope to be in, uh, you know doing a world title fight myself. So we'll see. Uh, you you come a long way from those uh, from those days at the Newsboys Boxing Club. Some I don't know thirty some five years ago. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Forty five. Uh, Forty five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like wow. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all right. You, uh, now let's talk about outside the ring a little bit. Now Troy, first of all, you like you know you've had some success. You had uh, uh, you know with your with your clothing line Rosswear. Um, you guys have all done some acting gigs. Uh, Ray, tell us about this character, Axe Undead, from uh, from the uh, Resident Evil. Uh, Resident Evil, sorry, Resident Evil. Axe Resident Undead. Evil. Tell us about your character. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, like he was, he was a misunderstood zombie, who all he was looking for is a little tenderness and companionship. <laughs> And everyone kept running away from him, so he had to chop him in half. <laughs> uh, it was really that simple. <laughs> a, a pretty intimidating guy on the set, Ray. Did you have a few people running from you on the? <laughs> Genuinely, yes. <laughs> Actually, even afterwards, it was, um, that role changed my world. Um, it was it yeah. was sensational to do. I think Paul Anderson regularly whenever i can whenever i see him well i don't see him that often anymore but um i i was actually in uh three resident evils the um uh, afterlife uh retribution and whatever the third one is called um i had a little cameo in there too um outside of that it was it was absolutely sensational um they, have you got any more any more gigs oh my my whole career exploded because of that um, I've been, uh, I was on Pixels. I'm, <laughs> I'm Sergeant Duff. If you guys ever watch <laughs> Pixels, I, I was in, um, Suicide Squad. Uh, but in Suicide Squad, right. well, there is in Suicide Squad, there was a guy, um, what's it called? Uh, Diablo, fire hands who would throw the, right. when he got upset. If you watch the movie, there's a scene when he gets, he turns into mega Diablo. He gets big. He gets ferocious. He gets me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> a little typecast, I'd say then. <laughs> just, just a little. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm good with it. 
Yeah, well, that's awesome, man. You 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 know, you've got a career. You're still, uh, as I say, you're still active. I guess when the fights come up, when the right yeah. opportunity comes up, uh, you know, raise raise well, there. Uh, yeah. So Troy, Troy, and Mark, you guys were both in Cinderella, man. It was. I'm telling you, watching that movie was so much fun because I knew so many guys in, in the film. It was, it was yeah. really really cool to see you guys in there. Uh, uh, Troy, you played uh, boxer John Henry Lewis, right? Uh, you were also yes. in the movie, uh, 2007 movie, Resurrecting the Champ with Josh Harnett, Samuel L. Jackson. You played the younger version of the champ. Uh, you also appeared in The Phantom Punch in the role of uh, Floyd Patterson, the little peekaboo style, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you're side, you're right? Yes, yeah. So, uh, so tell me about uh, your 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 uh, movie career, your your acting career, and, and is, is, it, is this sprouting into something more? I, I, I can't say it is... It's it's brought in some more, uh, but I do enjoy it. I do enjoy being on set. It's just completely different. It's uh, it's um, it's a little easier than actually taking the punches. But right. the fact <laughs> is that you, when you have to bit. do it, <laughs> take, 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 take your actual punches. But um, it's 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 it, it's a very enjoyable. Like I mean, to just sit back and um, um put together uh, fight scenes and stuff like that with the coordinator and stuff like that, putting punches, combos together and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to be on set and uh, we have a lot of fun together. We have a lot of laughs and stuff like that. And there's a lot of time that we just uh, sit around and just talk at the end of the day. So it's, uh, it's fun to be on the scenes with uh, just doing the, doing the, um, the, the movie roles. Well, I mean, if you yeah. could fight choreograph fights all the time, hey, we'd still all also be doing it, right? <laughs> yeah, okay, you're exactly, gonna throw the jab. Exactly. I'm gonna slip under the jab. I'm gonna hit the no. uh, throw the right uppercut. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's, nice. it's an opportunity. Mark, Mark. It's a, yeah. yeah, go ahead. It's a genuine right. opportunity to just play make believe as adults. Yeah, it's that's all it is. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. cool. I know I'm, I'm doing a little bit of acting myself. I'm actually playing a, a news news uh, news re a news anchor in, in a show that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. But uh, I, also, I was also a, I know it was really hard. I was also I played an NFL uh, an NFL play by play guy in in the uh, in the series right. Condor, and uh, that was okay. another stretch. Oh. Right? I'm really they're acting me to really <laughs> go deep, you know, and really really expand my horizons by being an anchor and a sports guy. Hey, that's, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Tell us about your experience on, on the set of Cinderella, man, Mark. I can't remember your character. You were... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I, my name was uh, Art you Lasky in it. that movie. <laughs> Art yeah, Lasky, yeah, no, no. Right. I was... <laughs> but but the, the the funny thing is when when the you know we spent a lot of time with Russell Crowe over in Australia we stayed at his house on his farm and then we came over to Toronto to do the uh, the acting at Maple Leaf Gardens for the the actual fight scenes so my character was was after a, a fighter in the 30s uh, who had a very big nose a big prost a big nose so ah. um they they made a nose for me to make it my nose look bigger and actually you know it straightened out my nose a little bit i thought it looked okay but then i still remember <laughs> russell crow russell crow was there with ron howard and russell said to ron howard right there where all three of us were saying he goes russell said the nose isn't big enough make it bigger russell said that because i think he didn't look better than him in the movie so literally they made this prosthetic nose my face like ugly like really ugly and i'm like yeah. anyways so so in the movie i ended up with a giant prosthetic nose and uh i got one line in the movie i, I think about three and a half four minutes I, i'm literally right after troy in the movie um but yeah that was a phenomenal experience we had a great time um and, and you speak about you know like acting i've done a couple other little smaller gigs but i did a i did one commercial with troy and i sparred troy we, we used to spar hundreds of rounds together the hardest punch I ever received from Troy was filming this commercial. And I blame it on Troy, <laughs> but <laughs> the, the choreography, but the left jab, right jab, and then he hits me with like a, I think it was a right hook, and I, I turn away from it. But Troy was too slow. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so you turn back. <laughs> so I turned, punch, I, I turned into the punch, and boom, he hit me on the side. I'm telling you, 
I couldn't see straight for days. I went to the eye doctor. I was worried about it. Whoa, oh but that was the hardest punch. And and you know what? I thank Troy because we sparred hundreds of rounds. And you know, he said, you know, you the best thing you do is not beat up your sparring par partners. So he kind of went easy on me all over, you know, all those years of sparring, which was good because when I felt that punch, I mean, if I was an opponent of Troy, I mean, it's unbelievable the power he had. And the reality is, he knocked down Steve Cunningham. Steve Cunningham knocked down Tyson Fury in uh, in their fight. So you connect the dots and you look at the power that Troy had. So you know, it's un just unfortunate with his. I you know, you go back to his world title fights because uh, you know he it, yeah. it was because he won them. First of all, bad. He won them. Yeah, yeah he yeah, won them. He won them. You know, yeah, he won yeah. Them. There, there you go. There, there you go. He won them. And but I remember, I go back. I remember those like all the, the Canadian amateurs, right? That we've had over over the years. I mean, well, Willie Dewitt could bang. Sean O'Sullivan could bang. Uh, you know, yep. uh, Donovan never went to the Olympics, but he was a good a good good banger too. But then when you had Agerton mm -hmm. and you know Agerton. Scotty Olson and and of course Olson. Lennox and you know. We we yeah. Canadians has we had some really and Troy was man Troy could start people right? just plain and simply yeah uh, you know yeah he left a lot of people uh, on their butts looking up and wondering what the heck happened but uh, you know we've had we've had a lot of good um, good uh, Canadian fighters who, who could really really punch and which helps me transition to into our next uh, session because we're talking now we're going to talk about the fights coming up. But specifically, our Joe, old pal before Lennox. You, before you go, go you, into it, going? can I just yeah, clear yeah, the air yeah. with Mark? Because he was the one yeah. who coordinated the boxing, the the punching, the punch <laughs> sequence. Okay. Right, right, right. He was He's the a one who coordinated everything, and I was just going with the flow. <laughs> and he wanted the <laughs> punch that he was supposed to be blocking. <laughs> You're right. Ah, 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 if, that, if that hit the uh, chin, I was that was, that was, a, that was a part of the story that he did not say. That he was the one that actually right. coordinated the fight sequence, the punches, and he walked into the punch. So he knows it's coming. He still gets hit. Come on, man. He still got it. <laughs> you tell, yeah, you tell it. How, 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 how much more can you telegraph a punch than that, right? Well, I could write my name on it. It was so slow, the punch. So, so we we had to do a second take, and the next punch, he actually he actually threw it with speed, and then he then he hit me. Boom! Oh my god! Oh, yeah. You moved your head once. You moved your head again, and then it was coming, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's because you were so quick with the head movements, Mark. That's what it was. Okay, so. Exactly. Uh, uh, so now, okay, so we're uh, Lennox Lewis, Mike Tyson. Tyson says that he's fighting Lewis in September, and now Lewis has confirmed the two sides are fighting. So it, it now looks like these guys are going to be fighting in September. First of all, uh, what do you what do you think of the uh, of the guys coming out of retirement to 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 uh, to have the this senior circuit thing happening in in pro boxing right now? Are you for it? Or are you against it? What do you think about it? Let's start with you, Mark. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't like it. I mean, the reality is, you know, it was kind of nice maybe to see Tyson in the ring against Roy Jones, but was it great boxing? No, it, was, it wasn't the Tyson of no. Young. It wasn't the Roy Jones of Young. Um, you know, maybe they're in the ring once, but now it's kind of, it's, it, it's going to turn into a sad sort of situation where people's memories are going to be, you know, what they've seen, you know, in recent times. And I'm shocked that Lennox is actually coming out of retirement because, I thought that he was the one guy that stepped away from the sport at the at the peak when he fought Vitaly Klitschko, and I remember they wanted to do a rematch years later, and they said, "Okay, well," he said, "Okay, pay me fifty million dollars." Well, they came up with the fifty million dollars. He said, "Okay, pay me a hundred million dollars, and I'll do it." So he kept <laughs> adding. So, so he's a smart guy. Up in the I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Yeah, I'm kind of shocked. He's he's actually agreed to this because I thought he's just stirring the pot. Mike Tyson kind of said. I'm not fighting Holyfield, I'm fighting Lewis. And I thought he just said that to say it to the reporters. Um, because in my mind, I don't think the fight ever happens. But you said he, he's confirmed it. So, you know. Well, uh, he hasn't I'm confirmed it. He has said that the two sides are talking, right? He said the two sides are talking, right? I, I think they'll just do lots of talking. And I don't think it's going to happen. That's that's what I believe. But we'll see. Because okay. Lewis All is right, smart. Ray, what do you Lewis think? is a... <laughs> Yes, he is smart. That's for sure. Smart and businessman, Ray. What do you think? I think. It's well, these guys are much older than you, first of all. So there. You go. That's exactly <laughs> it. I'm gonna, I want a piece of them. 
Now that they're all decrepit, I want a piece of them. <laughs> Call me an opportunist. I don't care. Um, <laughs> no, um, I think it's great. I think, like, yeah, I agree with Mark. It was, like, if you look at the fight between um, Holy, uh, Tyson and uh, Roy and, uh, Jones Jr., Jones. honestly, um, nowhere remotely close to what it was would have been like. I, actually, I did not know this, that after Roy Jones beat, John Ruiz, his next opponent at heavyweight was going to be Mike Tyson. But he, his objective was just to get up to heavyweight and turn around, come back down. Um, apparently, this was something that, um, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, Sugar Ray Robinson attempted to do and failed at the middleweight to late heavyweight and back to middleweight yeah mm -hmm. yeah um so well, well to wait, 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 wait back to a yeah right right yeah. um but instead um he he got to back to light heavyweight and then well we know how history played out but the, the reality is again in the event that he had fought then then yeah that would have been a, a sensational fight the roy jones that showed up that day I don't know him. I, I don't know him at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, I was yeah. exceptionally happy for both. That was just funny. I, I, yeah. I was. I was. I was. It was. It was just a a, a, a nostalgia thing, if anything. And I'm gra I'm beyond glad that no one got hurt, um, because right. they don't deserve to get hurt. They right. are legends, and that's it. Yeah. That's all. Unfortunately, there's no pension in boxing, so that's why they get what they get. But. Right. Um, as for Lennox and Tyson, by all means, it's, they made an exorbitant amount of money for doing a sparring session. Um, and I, I think that they are more than deserving of millions of dollars, millions upon millions for all the things that they gave us in, in, uh, in their prime, by all means, let them cash in. It's today that, what's it called? This whole, uh, social media business is, is turning out to be so incredibly lucrative that nobody's are making millions of dollars, then why shouldn't one of the legends do it? And it, at least as long as they both understand that it's a sparring session, there's no ego. Well, I highly doubt that there won't be an ego, but um, let them both make some money. Make make the 20 million that Mike made the first time. By all means. Right. I think it's great. What do you think, Troy? You think, uh, what do you think about all this? You know what? I, 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 I agree with both sides, uh, both uh, both Mark and uh, Ray, but I, I, I actually enjoy it. I enjoy it. I'm happy to see that these um, these old guys are coming back. And uh, they're, 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 it's like they're highlighting the sport all over again because um, some of the younger guys are not doing it as well. And, uh, you know, they're putting that, that, that uh, spotlight back on boxing. So anything to keep it relevant and uh, uh, to keep it going. You know, and uh, to bring back the names that um, some some people have just forgotten about. I think I think I think I actually think it's great. And um, Lennox uh, Lennox versus Tyson again? Why not? Let's let's see what they yeah. can do with themselves with, in their old age. You know, right? And I was, well, these yeah, guys I, have I, a I lot of history. Look forward to see it. Yeah, they have a lot of history. These guys exactly, um, a lot of history from when I mean, they were young until Arnie, now. Arnie Beam used to take him down to the Catskills. He used to take Lennox down to the Catskills to spar yeah. with with Tyson because he didn't have anybody else to spar with back in the day, you know, of that caliber. Yeah. And you know, they they developed kind of like there was actually developed a friendship that they still have today. But I think they both <laughs> recognize this could be a pretty lucrative thing. So my question is now, who wins? I'm going to tell you my opinion first. I think Lennox has no problem i mean we just saw some of some of the highlights of the first the first time they fought you know there there's some people who say that lennox never fought uh, tyson at his best but you know what Le lennox could have beaten tyson at any time he was willing to fight tyson at any time the the uh the opportunity never presented itself earlier on but you know we saw what happened when lennox finally did did fight him lennox is an extremely good boxer he can keep tyson away he's got that right hand that all he has to do is land one and it's lights out game over so in my opinion i don't think there's any way in the world that tyson ever beats lennox under, under any circumstances so let's go back and reverse now troy what do you think i think um well definitely i think lennox will end up pulling it off again um 
was well, uh, well, obviously now he has to really get back. He's been off for a pretty long time, but being being out of the ring sometimes it helps it helps uh, preserve your body. And um, him being off off this long it helps preserve preserve his body and help him get back into shape. So all he has to do is get those uh, those muscles tweaking again and get it going. I think you'll do. I think you'll do fine. Now with the fight with Roy Jones and Tyson, I was I was pretty upset. Right. Not from not because of Tyson. Tyson came in in great shape, but Roy Jones. I was expecting a lot more from him. Like uh, Bobby yeah, and we to be able to work that speed, stay away from uh, Tyson. But um, at the end of it, I guess uh, Roy just did not trade for the fight. Because Tyson looked in good shape, but Roy did not. No, he had the spare tire. He was just running, man. He was just he was, he was in there. It's he's trying to get away from Tyson. Where's my check? Where's my check? Where's my check? Get out of here. Okay, that's, Ray, what do you think? That's right. Uh, yeah. What, um, what, what do you think? I, 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 my heart of hearts, I, I, I have to agree with both of you that Lennox is, should win this fight. The only thing is, Lennox hasn't been tested in in uh, seventeen years. Um, so the, the Lennox that comes out, who knows? Um, much like Roy, you know, like if it was the Roy that came in with speed, that might have been a different contest, but there was no speed. There was no nothing. So let's see exactly what Lennox looks like when he comes, when he comes out. Um, Lennox, I, 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 I think Lennox, the few times I've seen him, he's, he's actually gotten a whole lot bigger, like a whole lot bigger, like quite possibly 300 pounds bigger. Um, and now it's a question of, does he, does he do the necessary work to get down to, well, his fight weight before was around 250, 245. That's a whole lot of weight to lose. And I was right. talking, we all know Chris Johnson, um, punch him in the head, Chris Johnson. Um, and he was just telling me how Lennox has been training and training hard and he's actually dropped some like 20, 30 pounds. So he's taking it seriously. I think that he, not an easy night, but I think he wins. I think he, 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 he takes his fight. So. So is Chris training uh, Lennox? Is, is he working with Lennox? No, they're just good friends. Um, there's a uh, Steve Hayden is a strength and conditioning coach and okay. he's working with Lennox. Okay. So, uh, okay. Mark, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I was literally on my phone still Googling because I still don't believe this fight's going to happen. <laughs> but, but if it, uh, like you said, uh, um, well, that's your I pick if that doesn't happen, right? That, that's my pick. I, if, if I was a betting man, I still say it doesn't happen, but I will go with Lennox. And, and I do, I have noticed looking at him on TV, he does look a little bit trimmer. He does seem to look like he's in shape in better shape than what he was, let's say, even a few years ago. So maybe he is training. I just, I just, in my heart, I just believe that uh, uh, Lennox is is smart. He, he just doesn't want to deal with this. He, he's living a good life. He doesn't need the money. Maybe Tyson needs, no, I don't, I don't even think Tyson needs the money. Um, I just, I just don't see it happening. But if I have to pick, I'm going to pick Lewis again. Right. Well, that's the unanimous yeah. end. So, uh, I mean, Tyson looks, I mean, he looks vicious training. He, he really does. But as you guys know, it yeah. only takes one good shot and ev all that training goes out the window, right? So, and, and, and Lewis, uh, uh, you know, he's, he's got the natural power. So, by the way, did, uh, did anybody see the the, uh, the uh, documentary, Lennox Lewis, The Untold Story? No. Yeah, it was, it was it? great. It, it, uh, it was great to see. It was great to see, uh, you know, that... I, I guess when he first turned pro, a lot of us, the Canadians, we were like, oh, you know, he, he deserted us for England and everything else. But he really tells a story in that, that uh, documentary. Or the documentary really tells a story about his life and how he came over to Canada and, and, and trained and learned how to box here. And, and I thought it was, you know, it was really nice to see. So, uh, um, yeah, yeah, it was, it was a great documentary. It is all, yeah, it's, it's I, awesome. I, I mean, it's 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, Troy. Yeah, I watched the movie. I thought it was I thought it was a really good, really good movie. It um, it showcased his life and where he from where he's from where he was to where he's gotten and stuff like. That. I thought it was a really good show. And plus, uh, there's stuff that I learned about Lennox that I didn't know before. So, um, like, um, he was left over in England and stuff like that. So I I didn't I I did not know that. 
So um, there was stuff that I learned and uh, about him, and that uh, you know, you know, you, you it's like okay, now now that you see him all the time, or you get a chance to see him and talk to him, and you actually know his story, it it actually becomes uh, a lot easier to talk to him because you know you know where he's come from. Yeah. And it, yeah, that really was really, I mean, yeah, there were really eye opening and it was a yeah, great documentary. Um, it was cool to see all the guys in the dressing room of that dressing room viz that was uh, had never been released. You know, you see Adrian in there, you see Chris and you see uh, uh, Egerton and, you know, it was uh, it was pretty cool to, to see all the, all the guys and in, 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 uh, before some big fights. And yeah. It was good. Okay, I want to move on to what's happening today uh, in, in the heavyweight division. Are we uh, first of all? We are, are we going to see Fury against Joshua? Is this a fight that we're ever going to see? What do you think, Mark? Yeah, I, I absolutely think that fight's going to get done. Uh, it has to get done now. Um, uh, it, it's it's the world wants to see it. Whether it gets done in England, I don't think so. It's probably the money's going to be in the Middle East. Um, it's uh, it's definitely an interesting fight. I'm a referee. I can't. I can't really say who I who I think will win, but I I uh, I have my my thoughts about it. Um, but uh, uh, I think we all want to see it, and and uh, the money's there, and and I think it's it's just a matter of the deal getting signed. That's yeah. So uh, let, let, I'm waiting for the announcement. All right, Ray. What do you think? Uh, is is the fight going to happen soon? And and uh, who who do you like in the fight? Um, one, uh, I, I believe that fight's going to happen. Um, I, there's just too much hype. There's ridiculous, just unfathomable money being talked about in this fight. It's going to happen. Um, I don't, Mark, I don't understand why you can't speak about this fight just because you're a referee. <laughs> you're not refereeing this fight. Because he might, he, um, he's, <laughs> he's auditioning. He said, help me. I want to, I want to work this fight. Oh, hey, I want to work this fight. He's auditioning. You do oh, not know. Okay. I might get the call. I might get the call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting. I'm, I'm putting my. Uh, I'm getting. Make sure my passport's updated so it's ready to go. I'm gonna be vaccinated. I'm gonna be good to go. Fair all right. Enough, fair enough. You got. All right. You got that. Oh. WBA, WCA, IBF. You got that. You got that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um. I, for me, this is a no-brainer fight. Um, I, I'm the only heavyweight, I guess, and I uh, playing around with the, like I've sparred with the contenders and stuff like that. And I, I was actually supposed to fight both these guys twice. Um, Fury pulled out because he's a bitch twice. Um, <laughs> Joshua pulled out twice because he got injured twice. Um, I'm I don't have a whole lot of. Uh, I just don't like Fury's what he brings to the table. I just I, I, I see this as a it just blows my mind that anyone can see that Fury's gonna beat him. He's he's not as technical as I'd like and what I'm speaking of is AJ, but he's technical enough with superior athleticism and ridiculous power. He throws big punch combinations, he know the only thing he got caught once, and he couldn't recover. He got caught against um, Vladimir, and he recovered. I don't know. I think that Fury did a fantastic job of exposing Deontay Wilder. But Deontay Wilder, my God, this is frustrating. He's not a big man. He's tall. He's my height. At, and he's fought as light as 212 pounds. He doesn't have anything called technique. And for whatever reason, history has put in front of him a whole bunch of people who were afraid. What it took was somebody to have some stones and take yeah. it to him and lay on him and wrestle with him because he's a small man. And that's exactly what Fury did. I'll give credit where credit's due. And Fury does have in boxing IQ. I will give him that. I won't give him anything okay. else. Okay, Troy, what do you think? What do you think? I, I, I think, um, Joe, I think it's going to be a, a great fight. Um, 
I can't say exactly who I think is gonna win the fight because um, I like I like Anthony. I like the fact that um, Anthony Joshua for his skills uh, in the ring. But when he's when he talk about skills, both guys have exactly like, we, like you said the of IQ IQ inside of the ring. Like Ray said, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a good night of boxing because here you have Tyson Fury who knows how to move around. Good ring generalship knows how to knows how to throw his jab, put his combinations together, and then you got um Anthony Joshua who can hit like a brick horse and also has a good level like of IQ inside of the ring when it comes to boxing ability. So I think when you put those two together, the fight's going to be an amazing fight. And uh, both guys have touched the canvas once or twice before. Um, right. Anthony has recovered when he went on um, Joshua. Uh, sorry, when he fought against uh, Klitschko, really? uh, he's got to back up and he came back to win win the fight. Um, Tyson Fury has hit the canvas in the twelfth round when he fought against Tyson. Uh, when he got fought against Wilder. Uh, DeAndre, Wild, DeAndre Wilder, so um, both guys know how to get up and how to recover and how to keep on pushing on to 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 bring the um, pull out the win. So at the end of the day, I think it's going to be a phenomenal fight. Yeah, that was a nice point. It was a nice job by by uh, Josh Wilson to come back against Ruiz when he when he after he, after losing to Ruiz with that stunner. Um, yeah, you've got two guys who who can box, two guys who, uh, who are technically sound. I, I there's something of there's I, I, there's kind of something an X factor. I don't know about Tyson Fury. There's something about that guy. That he just he just wills himself to victory because when he got dropped by Wilder, and I mean there's a, there's a good reason why people are scared of Wilder heading into that, right? He's forty two and zero with forty one knockouts, so he's a pretty he's well, he's he's, a, he's he, it's a scary record mm -hmm. that's for sure. And then when he fights uh, and and Tyson's uh, Fury's got Fury's got no fear, even when he's lying on his back and he looks like he is out cold. It looked to me I'm gonna that referee's mm -hmm. gonna count as twenty and he's not gonna get up. <laughs> He gets up. He gets up, and he wins. That. I yeah. mean, that was that was a that was a brilliant, uh, brilliant. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, he, he made a big fan out of me. I'll tell you that because the guy has heart, and, and that's. Uh, and then when he came back in the rematch, and really, there, he just, uh, you know, he, he was clearly. And this time, he didn't run from a ball. This time, he went after him, and uh, you know, he was the better fighter. Showed he has the power. I think it's going to be a great fight, and I think I might just give an edge to to Fury. Uh, uh because of that x factor but uh troy the uh i know that you don't want to pick the fight because you want to ref it as well is that right <laughs> that's, that's right i'm here to take i'm taking mark's you, job he wants to <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, guys. Uh, i'll be the small guy like rocky what do you what do you want right. every um uh bolo's fight big ray yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the little guy between the giants. Yeah, <laughs> that was good. Yeah, it was yeah. funny. So uh, the uh, what? Anybody else in the uh, heavyweight division catch your eye rate right these days? I mean, Andy Ruiz had a nice. Uh, he just uh, uh, won a decision over Chris Ariola. Got you know hit a couple of times, but that was uh, it was a nice comeback win for him. Uh, he dropped thirty pounds training with uh, Canelo. He looked slimmer. He looked better. Uh, then we've got, of course, Wilder, Alexander Yusuk, uh, Dillian White, Trevor Bryan, any of these guys that are out there right now besides, uh, you know, the two we talked about, Joshua and, and Fury, well, that uh, kind of catch your eye, you think? I, Go ahead. I, I, I watched Joe Joyce, and he, he's slow. He doesn't move fast, but he's like this, this the, the, the George Foreman when he came back from retirement. And he has a heavy punch, and he he beat um, Daniel Dubois, who I thought was going to be the next sort of uh, the future Anthony Joshua out of England. Uh, but he stopped him in about seven or eight rounds. So um, he's an interesting character, great personality. Um, but in Canada, even I mean, we have um, Arslan Mudav out of Montreal. He's eleven and zero with eleven knockouts. I refereed his first pro fight, and I said, "Wow, this guy is is a beast." So I mean, you know, he, I think he's from Chechnya originally, but uh, he's been boxing out of uh, Montreal for the last years. Um, but uh, it's an interesting division. I think the heavyweight division is getting better and better, and uh, um, there's there's a lot of fights out there, a lot of interesting fights. So we'll see. 
What about uh, what about uh, Simone Keen? I know he, he had that that one stunning loss, but uh, is he a guy that we'd want to consider too? Speaking of Canadians, maybe uh, Simon Keen. Sim well, what do you think, Grace? Um, it's sort of difficult for me to be partial, um, impartial, simply because I'm still at it, and I actually study these guys. I see a lot of holes in a lot of, like, I look at it from the standpoint that I want a piece of them. So I see holes. So not, now, <laughs> not answering the question, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I want, what? I was actually. And he doesn't want a referee. Oh, he wants to be across the ring. That's what oh, he wants to do. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> now, with, when it came to Simon Keene, I actually threw my hat, my, my name into the hat, and they called me up to fight him in April. They gave me seven weeks notice and i'm like yeah you, you guys anyways luckily for me i was actually doing <laughs> yeah. something um but yeah and then and then the athletic commissioner didn't didn't permit me to fight that fight the athlete the quebec act yeah surprisingly enough the quebec act athletic commissioner wouldn't accept that fight because i am so old and i am fragile and they're so confident that <laughs> Simon king is going to be me I, I like for the life of me all I think of is Dylan Carmen beat him, and he Dylan Carmen beat him via box. He outboxed him and then caught him. If Dylan can outbox him, he's a dead man in front of me. Like Jesus. Okay, then who else is there? Um, I like you brought up jo um, John Joyce, and he is. He is um, an interesting fighter. You're right. He's slow, but he's exceptionally powerful. And more importantly, he has a titanic chin. He takes punishment. It's only a matter of time before that, that egg cracks. And then what? And Daniel Dubois was seen as uh, an upcoming um, star. But I, I, that fight could have gone either way. Uh, it, he just got caught. With and I think he something happened to his ear or something like that. Um, Wait, I think he, he broke caught. his orb bone in his eye, didn't he? Oh yeah, some, I mean, something. I think you're right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But oh, like, he hit. like you said, <laughs> that's a, he that's a punch. Good, he's a puncher. Yeah, he's a puncher. He's a puncher, right? Yeah. Um, for me, the, there's so many guys to look out for. Um, I like. I want to see exactly what Usyk does. I don't think he's going to be the undisputed heavyweight champion. I'd like to see him. So he beat up Chisora. My sister will slap up Chisora. Um, he's Chisora doesn't box. He just wants to swing for the fence and he wants to maul you. Um, he doesn't. He can't box. If you take us two steps, what in either direction, he will lose you. That's not a test. Give me. Give him a test. I think that he has a brilliant boxing IQ. Well, with all the fights that he's had. By all means, he no, he doesn't have heavyweight dominant power, but he has um, the pity pack. He can he can score all the points and stuff like that, and and and, and, and etch a win that way. I'd like to see exactly what um, what he brings to the table. I'd like to see what Deontay. Surprisingly enough, I'd like to see what Deontay does post Fury, because now everybody that steps in front of him has the blueprint on how to beat a very tall, very thin man who can't box. Rush him, break his body down, and that's it. It's not, it really is that simple. Now, okay. don't stand in knockout range. Just run in and maul him. Right. Now, let's see what happens. Okay, there's your next fight for you, Ray. All right. Take him, take him oh, on, Deontay please. Wilder. That would be a nice win for you. <laughs> Okay, so Troy, uh, Troy, um, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, Jean Pascal because uh, you're you're a co-coach for Jean Pascal. I know you're off to, uh, uh, I believe, Puerto Rico this weekend to start training camp. Uh, tell us about his his upcoming fight and where he's at. Well, um, John, right now he's uh, he's been in Puerto Rico for, uh, since December of this year, and. Um, the fight was scheduled with uh, Floyd Mayweather versus I think it's, I always say it wrong because it's the two brothers Jake Paul, uh, Logan Paul. Right. Um, so right. The, the fight was scheduled for um, for for them to fight February twentieth. So we were getting ready to be on the uh, co-main main event at that time. 
and uh, the fight got canceled. Well, it got canceled, got postponed. And now that the fight has surfaced again, and now they have the new date of uh, June June um, June six, I'm gonna be heading back down into Puerto Rico to train um, to train to train John. He's so far he's look he's looking really good. His weight is really it's is is uh he's his weight's fine. Uh he's 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 ready to fight. Besides he's been in camp for so long already. He's it's time for him to fight and get you know, get get let his let his hands move. Put his hands on somebody. And the fight that he's fighting with Badu Jack, he already knows Badu because he's fought him already. He saw him fight a guy by the name of um another Canadian, uh Adonis Stevenson. And uh, he's and like I said, he's fought, he's fought, he's fought Badu already, so he's he's pretty much ready to go. Well, that's exciting, man. He, he, he's a good fighter. Some other Canadians I'm going to throw out there some names: uh, Patrice Folney, Custio Clayton, uh, Cody Crowley, Archer Byer Slenov. Any of these guys uh, uh, get you guys excited? Mark? Yeah, well, I. I just saw Arthur fight on uh, the zone and, and uh, you know, he, he's moving along nicely. He's a, our Pan Am games champion back in 2015. Um, and, and the, the fights they're giving him are tough fights, you know, and he, he beat a very good fighter. Um, I think his name was um, Israel Mercado. It was a very good fight on yes. the zone. So mm-hmm. he's with a good, uh, yeah, I'm beaten and, and the fight was good. So, uh, you know, they're moving him along, and uh, the reality is he's in with a good promotional company, which which is, you know, Matchroom, I think it's Matchroom Boxing. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's some potential on the Canadian horizon. These fighters just got to get the fights. It's hard in this current environment because you see boxing in the U.S. right now. It's going on during the pandemic, which, which you know, it's obviously not going to happen here in Canada. So their careers are being stalled unless you have a, a major promotional company like, you know, Matchroom or something else who, whom are getting you the fights. So, yeah. So what, what do you think, Ray? You think the, uh, what is it called? Is it the, uh, the, 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 the Jake Paul thing, uh, you know, that, and, 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 uh, money may whether that, that new promotional company that they're involved with is a trillion. I can't remember what's not trillion. Triller. Triller. Anyway. Triller, that's it, Triller. All right, what do you think of this? Uh, do you think this is stuff is good for boxing? I think they should call it something else. <laughs> like, it's <laughs> not boxing. It's not boxing. Like, it's I see. it's WWE. There's Greco-Roman wrestling, and then there's WWE. Like, call it what it is. It's something else. It's not boxing. Um, and I'm not hating on them. Like, if you can make, if you can make like tons of money on it, all the power to you. Like, just don't call it boxing because I don't know what Roy's doing. He's an, he's acting now. He's what he, he's an actor. He's acting like he's fighting somebody real. He ain't, he ain't real. When he fought, nothing irked me more than when he fought Conor McGregor, and I heard a quote that he that Conor made a hundred million dollars for that fight. His first fight, professional, I, I don't know if he had an amateur fight, his first fight he made $100 million. That's more than Marvis, Marvelous Marvin Hagler made in his whole career. That's more than Tommy the Hitman Hearns made in the whole career. They have impacted the sport by magnitudes more than that one fight, that, 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 that showcase of God knows what. I understand that, like it's just the day and age, and all the lines have a, the stars have aligned so as to give them that opportunity. But honestly, it's it, it left a real bad taste in my mouth. Call it what it is. This is like an exhibition of some sort. Um, in mixed martial arts, in the beginning, you had the 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 grapplers versus the karate guys and whatnot, and they fought. And there's nothing wrong with that contest, and it did what it did. Um, that's what this is. You have a boxer versus an actor, and yeah, call it something different and categorize yeah. categorize it something different. I, th- I think it didn't, um, didn't didn't Ali fight Andre the Giant or something? <laughs> he, he, he fought some oh, no, uh, Gorilla Monsoon. He fought Gorilla Monsoon. Uh, Gorilla Monsoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, um, okay, so look, what what? Group Yvonne Michelle. Apparently, Group Yvonne Michelle is still putting on shows, but. The, they're putting on a show south of the border, um, where yeah. they could put put them on and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if it's like they're keeping their fighters busy, but or active or what they're doing. But he's 
he's doing something with it in during COVID times. Well, there's one th final thing I want to bring up, guys. And I noticed we 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 I didn't I didn't want to hold you guys too long, but I know so uh, Troy's already had to change devices over there. But uh, uh, Manny Bujol, the uh, Canadian uh, boxer, she has been uh, she's getting the runaround from the IOC. Okay, so uh, Mandy, uh, she w is one of the the best female fighters to come out of this country. Period. Uh, she's won Pan Am Championship, uh, Commonwealth Games gold medal. She's uh, been one a world rank for many for you know basically since she came on the scene. Now she took maternity leave for the birth of her daughter Kate in 2018. She's prepared to fight in every single Olympic qualifier. They're all be they were all canceled because of COVID. And so what the IOC has done is they've gone back to the 2018 2019 years to uh, for the qualifying period to determine who goes to the Olympics. Well, that those are the years when Mandy was. Um, you know, taking leave to a maternity leave for her daughter. So, uh, okay, somebody send a police over for you. Anyway, uh, she uh, she's uh, she has me to find the qualifiers, and the IOC is not giving her a spot. I mean, she's a, one of the top contenders for a medal. The IOC is not getting it. What do What do you think of this? Uh, what do you think of this, uh, Mark? I'll start with you. And in, 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 uh, what do you think of this? I think it's a very tough and difficult uh, situation. I mean, if the way they're doing the Olympic qualifications this year, obviously they're not fighting for a spot. They're just picking a spot. So this is politics get involved. But if the reality is she was the Pan Am Games gold medalist. This, this is the region um, in 2015. This is the region. Is it 2015? Yeah. This is the region yeah. that... Copa box, South America, North America, and the island countries. She was the she was the winner, the gold medalist. So they have to, and and I, and I understand the situation is they've refused her letter, the the lawyer's letter that she's presented. In my opinion, they would have to give her a spot at the Olympics. It, it, it makes no sense if they're not going to. Now I don't think they've actually announced the final names, but they refused the letter that she presented to them. So. It's a sad situation because, you know, she's essentially worked her way into a position to compete again at the Olympics and she's done everything she can. And due to the pandemic, she's not in a, a situation where she can fight for her spot. So uh, I don't know. I, I empathize with her and, and uh, uh, you wish maybe perhaps the, the Canadian cable would do something to uh, to help back her and, and get a spot too. But Spoilers. I don't know. That's yeah, it's a tough situation. Yeah. I mean, Boxing yeah. Canada has to get behind them for sure. Yeah, Troy, what are yeah. you? What are your thoughts on? My thoughts are exactly what like what Mark says because um, when when it comes to the Olympic Games or pretty much any any games, but the uh, any games like the World Championships, the Commonwealth Games, you want to be fighting against the you want to be showcasing your skills against the best in the world, and if she's the best. Um, one of the best opponents. I think she should automatically be in. Uh, she's won. She's she's won numerous tournaments, numerous um, uh, fights. I think uh, she should automatically be uh, a shoe in to be in the in the Olympics, just because of her situation. And she's already done explain exactly what's ha what's happened and um, coming off of her um, you know um, spectacular win. I think she should automatically be in there. And what are your thoughts? Uh on this ring well um it, like i'm beyond biased um i have a hard on for the ioc after what they did to me when i was trying to go to the 2004 olympic games um for the record uh for those who don't remember um i qualified i was supposed to be the canadian representative and they deemed me 54 days too old to go on to compete for canada um, especially when the rules of engagement dictated an athlete must be 17 hyphen 34. Well, we read that as 34 until you're 35, as did apparently five members of the international committee. And then the other five read it as on your 34th birthday, you're 34. And later, you're 35. Oh, 34 plus a day. And you're one day too old. And I'm, I'm like... I trained so hard and dedicated so much time to be denied an opportunity for such a 
a nothing. So, yeah, I I don't like the IOC. Um, when it comes to this scenario, yeah, they have done it again, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you and I hope that every human rights organization goes off and pickets their their uh, their office because this is absurd. It's it's first class absurd. She has earned the right to be there. She has the ability to be there, and yet because of a technicality of being a female or of being a mother, they deny her. They deserve everything they have coming to them. Like, I don't know what's hap what she's doing, but I hope that every right. human rights organization is like, like laser focused on ripping them apart. Well, that's that you got, you, you nailed it. You know, you really did because this is clearly a human rights issue and she is being discriminated against and it's just not right. And 100%. Uh, you know, every, everything against it. So, I mean, I'm just hoping that uh, she can get as much support as she can from everybody in, in the Canadian Amateur Boxing Association, everybody, you know, who can throw their support in this, Ontario Boxing, everybody get in there, support Manny, and uh, let, let's get her to Tokyo. Guys, uh, I, 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 I'm, uh, thanks. I really appreciate you uh, giving me all your time this afternoon. I just really, really enjoyed no this. Uh, it, it's been fantastic having you here on the show. Uh, we're we we'll have to do this again, and maybe we'll do it again when there's a, another big heavyweight tilt uh, on the horizon. Uh, as guests on Joe Tilly Sports, we got a uh, foursome for you club link, so we're going to get up there and hit the ball, hit the small ball around there, and have some more laughs. Uh, I know it's been a long time since we've golf, Mark, with your dad, Norm. That was a lot of, a while ago. Um, and remember, folks, there's more there's more sports to come, but we're all in this together. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you, Thank Joe. You. Promotional consideration provided by Clublink. Clublink. One membership, more golf. Do you know why that happened? You didn't fix your ball mark. The birds around here are very protective of the course, and when people don't take care of it, this is what happens. It's pretty simple. Just find your mark, fix it, and at least one other. Hey, look at the bright side. We're not up on the northern course. They've got bears and moose. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. Joe Tilly Sports is brought to you by COSA, Central Ontario Standard Bread Association, providing a united voice for harness horse people racing at Ontario tracks. Check out your benefits today at COSAonline.com and check out COSA TV on Facebook and YouTube for all the latest harness news and live action updates. Live racing year-round. Go to HPIBet.com for all your wagering options. Become a member today and your first bet is free. That's HPIBet.com. <laughs> Okay, now it's time for my COSA Swiss Pick of the Week. Last week, I went to Freehold Raceway for Saturday's final of the Dexter Cup uh, for three-year-old trotters, a purse of $130,000. I told you I like Incommunicado after his impressive win in the eliminations, and he did not disappoint with Gaston Gingra on the buggy. Incommunicado held off a challenge from Believer heading into the final turn. Incommunicado, trained by Aki Svonstad, pulled away to win it going away. 156-3, Semi Crockett a distant second. Looks like he'll be the horse to beat in Hamiltonian. My 
pick this week. We're going to the WN Reynolds Memorial at Yonkers Friday for the uh, division of the WN Reynolds Memorial for three old patients, Colts and Geldings. And we're going to go with Scott Zeron and Mullinax, trained by Mark Ford. Reminds me of Rance, I guess. My record now in the year is five wins, two seconds, a third, a fourth, an eighth, and a tenth. And by the way, my Kentucky Derby pick, Rocky World, was a solid 17th. For all the racing updates, visit COSA TV on Facebook. Go to hpibet.com for your wagering options. There are many tracks racing in other parts of North America. Well, the NHL playoffs open next week. The Leafs are going to finish first in that all-Canadian North division, playing either the Habs or the Jets. Really shouldn't matter, although Winnipeg is really on the skids right now. Maybe the easiest opponent at this stage, but who knows? Zach Hyman is skating again. He should be back soon. Zach Bogosian might be a little ways away yet. Probably won't be playing until the playoffs re uh, start. Looks like Nick Foligno will uh, miss some time with his upper body issue. Hopefully that's not too long, and hopefully he's back before the postseason starts. In any case, the Buds are in very good show shape. Austin Matthews versus Connor McDavid in round two. Looking forward to that. Uh, meanwhile, Tom Wilson got fined $5,000 for yet another violent outburst. It's really a travesty, folks. Uh, how can he not be suspended, which will likely cause the Rangers to seek their own uh, style of retribution? Well, the Raptors are getting, uh, well, they're, they're trying to hang in. Pascal Siakam with a 39-point night against the Lake Show. Kyle Lowry uh, showed LeBron and the folks in L.A. what they missed out on by not signing him and scooping him up at the trade deadline. He poured in 37 points. Unfortunately, Kalo was a scratch against the Clippers. <clears throat> the Raps only have an outside shot, maybe at best, to catch the Wizards for the last playoff play-in spot. Meanwhile, Malachi Flynn, he's been a good sign. He was named the NBA East Rookie of the Month. The Dinos guard averaged 12.7 points, 4.8 assists, and 4.1 rebounds, shooting over 40% from distance. Well, the Jays got another scare this week. Uh, George Springer, in his first week coming off uh, two homer games, stumbled coming out of the box, but it was just a case of fatigue, they say. Too much too soon, I suppose. After a slow start, Marcus Semien is heating up. He's already got more home runs than all he had all of last season. Teoscar Hernandez is back. The bullpen has been spectacular. Nate Pearson started for the Buffalo Bilson, uh, Bisons in their season opener. He can't be far away from joining the big club. This could be a real good year for the Bluebirds. Well, Mike Weir found a fine way to celebrate his birthday. Just over a week before he turns 51, the lefty from Bright's Grove captured these PGA Tour champions in, Spir in Spirity Invitational. Uh, Weir fired a final round 467 to finish at 10 under par. Good for a two-shot win over John Daly and David Toms, two familiar names. It was Weir's first win on the Champions Tour and first win of any kind in over 13 and a half years. The tour stops in Birmingham, Alabama this week for the region's tradition. Well, our weekly sports contest, Joe Tilly Sports Contest, is heating up. We're giving away 12 awesome Mitch Marner t-shirts and three collector sports prints from the talented artist Rob McDougall. You can enjoy all Rob's work by going to robmcdougall.com. Just uh, subscribe to Joe Tilly on YouTube and you're entered. It's that easy and it's free. One t-shirt or print will be handed out each week. We'll notify the winners as we call their names out in the show. And good luck to you all. This week's winner, by the way, is Justin Dubé of Ancaster. Congratulations, Justin. And we close with a look at the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all-around great folks. We highly recommend them all. A reminder, the show is also available on the Spanglish Network and Zingo TV and the Fired Up Network. Thanks again, once again, to Troy Ross, Mark Simmons, Ray Alobali, and join us next week when we welcome back Rod Black and Humble Howard for a PGA Championship preview. We'll see you then. Get Aldo at Remax Crossroads. Do you want to buy or sell a home? Could 31 years of real estate experience help you? Why not speak to an amazing team that loves to overpromise and overdeliver? Call 416 Get Aldo or visit www.getaldo.com to find out what next level real estate looks like. RS Demolition and Excavation has extensive experience with complete teardowns and interior strip outs. Looking to build a custom home? RS Excavating Services has the experience you need to build in established neighborhoods. For the highest level of quality and cost-efficient results, we provide innovative demolition solutions completed on time and on budget while ensuring our number one priority, safety. 
Call 647-852-3006 for an estimate or visit rsdemolition.ca. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. And let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did 905-686-5678. Gold Line Resources, discovering high-grade gold in Sweden. Gold Line Resources owns a prospective portfolio of four high-grade gold exploration projects located on the Gold Line Mineral Belt of North Central Sweden and one gold exploration project in the Skelftia Belt of North Central Sweden. For more information on how you can invest in this new initiative, go to goldlineresources.com or call one 800 858 9710. Gold Line Resources can also be found on the TSX Ventures Exchange as GLDL. Looking for an advantage in choosing your investment options? Belmont Venture Capital will provide you with the best up to date opportunities in the mid cap and junior sector. The company was formed 12 and a half years ago and is spearheaded by two seasoned veterans of the financial markets with over 80 years combined experience. Go to BelmontVentureCapital.com today for the latest hot picks on the market. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter. BelmontVentureCapital.com.